Hello, Rob here, and thanks for uh, checking out R&B Reviews. Um, I'm doing this special video because uh, a few minutes ago, um, I was finishing up watching a DVD for a movie that I was going to review here on the channel, and um, when I stopped the DVD, the news came on, and they were showing clips of uh, Roger Ebert. Now, not too long ago, he wrote a article saying that uh, he was going to be taking a leave of absence because his cancer returned, and... Um, I thought they were talking about, you know, that he was going to be stepping down or something like that. But then all of a sudden, these they were started showing all these clips and this uh, sort of like a slideshow presentation, like you would see at a in in, mem, in memoriam sort of thing, you know, where they show pictures of somebody's past. And it was like it struck me odd because it was like um, they sh it was like they were saying, you know, that Roger Ebert had died. And so I waited a few minutes to see whether that was true or not. And lo and behold, it said. Um, in the corner, they had a caption that said, Roger Ebert, uh, 1942 to 2013. And then I was like, holy crap. So I went to the computer to see if um, if it's true, you know, if there was any articles about this. And, uh, yep, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Roger Ebert has passed away of uh, cancer. Um, I just want to share some of my uh, memories of Roger Ebert. I never got to meet him, but... Um, I was familiar with him, of course. Um, I never really was an avid watcher of Siskel and Ebert. Occasionally I would watch the show if they were reviewing a movie that I was curious about or wanted to see. Um, I also remember them doing a guest appearance on Sesame Street with <laughs> Telly and Oscar. But, um, yeah, I, I, re I remember um, watching them, and I was always entertained by Siskel and Ebert as well as when Richard Roper came along. And they always made the movies very entertaining. You know, they didn't they how they talked about it and the intellectual conversations that they had on the show. And um, I, I watched the show a little bit more avidly when Richard Roper uh, came onto the show because one thing I noticed about the show is they always talked about movies that uh, were in limited release, whether it be foreign film or an independent film, and it wouldn't hit the goop. Like, so oftentimes I would, if these movies sounded interesting, I would often keep my eyes out for them on video and DVD. And sometimes, I'll admit, sometimes I did not always agree with Roger Ebert. Um, uh, I won't give into uh, too many details, but there's plenty of times. But I did respect him because he did strike me as somebody that you know loved the movies. He wrote some very good books. He had some very good in uh, insight on some of it, on some of the stuff. Um, and I was sad when um, at the movies ended. Um, they did try to keep it on for a while. Uh, they had the other hosts come in, and I know a couple years ago Roger Ebert tried to bring the show back with Ebert Presents, and I avidly watched that one as well. Um, but it, it was, uh, it's just, um, it's just a bit of a, for me, it's a bit of a shock. Before shocker. I uh, close the video out, um, I wanted to share a couple of my favorite quotes from Roger Ebert. Um, one of my favorite reviews is his review of Leonard Part 6 he did with uh, uh, Gene Siskel. So um, if you find it on YouTube or anything, I, I recommend checking it out. No good that. movie is too long and no bad movie is short enough. Uh, his review of North, um, <laughs> oh man, I remember this one. He said, I hated this movie, hated, hated, hated this movie, hated it. Hated every stupid, simpering, vacant audience, insulting moment of it. Hated the sensibility that thought anyone would like it. Hated the implied insult to the audience by its belief that anyone would be entertained by it. And here's another one from uh, his review for New York Minute. That was the movie that the Olsen twins made in 2004. This is a dumb movie about dumb people. All right, here's something a little bit more smarter. Here's his quote on why his movie ratings are relative and not concrete. It doesn't work that way because people should be smart enough to listen to what Richard Roper and I say instead of looking at the dumb thumbs and the dumb stars because they are gravitations and context that go wildly. A movie absolutely has to make me feel something, whether it's fear, laughter, whatever it might be. It has to get me on an emotional level. And there's a funny thing about emotion. There's nothing logical about it. A movie might be possibly lacking a number of, of the above listed necessary qualities, but if it goes completely past my logical reasoning responses and makes me f really feel something deeply, I'm going to rate it highly nonetheless. I can carefully examine a movie and find any number of faults with it, but if it's a horror movie that really scared me or a comedy that had me in hysterics, it still comes out as a winner. So do none of these other things matter? Actually, they matter a lot, just not as emotions. So, all right, well, rest in peace, Roger, and thanks very much for being a part of um, our culture, so thanks very much for your...